Well, coronavirus is here. It's hitting the world very hard. We are having another pandemic in the history. History tells us pandemics have been always around. To name just a few in the last hundred years, for example, Spanish flu until 1920s, Asian flu until 1958, and AIDS as a pandemic is recently also going on since 1981, and also swine flu, still a pandemic in the world going on. And coronavirus is one of them, and it's hitting us right now all around the world. So what do we do? Our governments call all of us to stay home. And when we are staying home, of course, we are staying hopeful, and we keep talking about on online platforms, about our lives, our profession, our hobbies, and so on. So as being wine professionals, us, the sommeliers, importers, uh, wine writers, of course, we will be talking about wine, as it is our job. So I asked my friends a question that actually we are all asking each other today. If coronavirus was the end of the world, such as like zombie apocalypse, as we are watching in all those Hollywood movies, what would be the bottle, what would be the wine that you would go and pick up at that moment and drink before the end of the world? Us wine professionals, we also keep collecting bottles. We have sellers, we age wine, we invite friends, we taste wines, we drink wine. So, if it was the end of the world, which wine would you open right now and drink? I ask the following professionals. So, following names are my guests in this episode. From France, we have champagne makers uh, Jérôme Legras, Etienne Calzac, and Agnès Corbon. From Finland, Essia Vellan, and my very good friend Tony Manen is also a part of this episode. And the Swedish team is Johan Ille, Christer Bankstone and Søren Polonius. The Norwegian gang is Liora Levi, Alexander Everson, Francesco Marzola, Simon Zimmermann and Henrik Dahl Janssen. Quite a Scandinavian mix here together with Little France and thank you all for joining this. So, let's start. From France. Jérôme Legras, one of the sweetest, one of the kindest person that you could possibly meet in the village of Chouy in Champagne. From Champagne, Lera et Haas. So Jérôme named his apocalypse bottle as Bollinger Vierwin Francais 2007. And then he said, I will drink all my Candubi bottles. Vierwin Francais is a blend of two spots in the village of Ai, which I was lucky enough to visit one of them. Claude Saint-Jacques, which you will see in now, a beautiful small spot surrounded by the short wall, so-called Clo. Survived the whole Phylloxera and came until today after Phylloxera with the least damage. And then also he says he would drink all his Canubi based Barolos. Canubi is quite a well-known Barolo Cru, a vineyard that is entirely inside the municipal of Barolo. And it's almost 100% Nebbiolo planted in there. Absolutely a wonderful red wine. Canubi is also told to be the first Cru in Barolo region. What Cru means? Cru means growth. Cru means a certain wine growth. It's a French term, mostly used in Bordeaux and Burgundy. So from here, as you can see, the Champenois really love their Nebbiolo. Jérôme was not the only person who really said that they love Nebbiolo, as Italians love Champagne. And then, these two. Lovely, sweet people, Etienne Calzac and Agnes Corbon, my dear friends. Actually, I met Etienne through Agnes, thank you Agnes for introducing me, and now we also managed to import their champagnes to Finland. So, Etienne Calzac is the winemaker in uh, Champagne Etienne Calzac, located in the village of uh, Avis, and he's someone I really call a friend, and I think Etienne will be a future rock star in Champagne region, you will see. So, Etienne's Apocalypse bottle is Chateau Aubryon, 1965, so he went all the way to Bordeaux. Chateau Aubryon is uh, one of the five first growths 
in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. Some people also call it the Napoleon Bonaparte classification. Chateau Aubignon is absolutely one of the top producers from the region and so-called the Premier Grand Cru class wine. And the house is dating back to 16th century and that is the Cabernet Sauvignon based blend. Agnes! Agnes Corbon. Agnes is the winemaker of the Champagne Corbon, still in the same village, village of Avis. And her apocalypse bottle is quite unexpected. She is drinking in the zombie apocalypse a Moldavian wine called Negro de Purkar. The wine is from her own vintage, 1975, which was a gift from a friend. And when she's drinking that wine, she wants her friend to be with her. And when the zombies are kicking the doors, she is gonna drink the Zint Humbrecht Cuvée Zint 2003 vintage, which is the birthday year of her daughter. And while zombies are in, she's getting drunk with a California classic, uh, Rich Vineyards Montebello 2004. This is one of my favorite California producers, as many people would agree with me, and it's a Cabernet Sauvignon based blend. So just to remind you, why I'm talking about wine when the whole world is dealing with coronavirus? Well, we are all at home, we have to focus and we have to stay hopeful, and we are all talking about our lives, our professions, and wine is our profession, so I talk about wine. All right, I continue with Finland. Finland, Essie Avellan, master of wine. Essie Avellan is my mentor and my friend whom I learned a lot. Luckily, I also had the chance to travel around Champagne with her. In this picture, you see we are driving through Epernay in 2017. And to be honest, when you are visiting the producers in Champagne, it's such a great feeling to have Essie next to you because you get the treatment like a king. Because Essie is the queen of champagne. Essie's apocalypse model is a magnum size of Louis Roderet Crystal Rosé 1999. This is the choice of our world-renowned champagne expert, Essie. And Essie is living in Helsinki, so as a Helsinki resident, that model makes a lot of sense because Crystal it was a specific cuvee done by Roderet for the Russian char Alexander II, who actually made Helsinki as the capital of Finland when Finland was a part of Russian Empire. So, quite a good historical catch, SC. And in the zombie apocalypse, I want to have a zip. We continue. Tony Immanen, my dear friend. He is the CEO of wine importing company Vinitier, based in Helsinki. And he's a good friend who has always supported me as a friend and as a mentor. Tony's apocalypse model is Borgogno Barolo, 1945 a producer dating back to 18th century in Piedmont and surprisingly, actually I had quite a few old vintages from that producer in the restaurant that I was working before. These old bottles of Borgogno, once it's in good condition, it hits the spot. Very remarkable wine. Now we go to Sweden. I have three guests from Sweden who joined to this episode with their replies. Johan Iller, another friend who I met when I was traveling in Austria, visiting producers, and we had quite a good time all together in the group. Johan lives in Stockholm and he is the head sommelier of the Stockholm classic Opera Kalleren. Johan's apocalypse model is Champagne Salon 1969. Wow! Wow! This is a Blanc de Blanc Champagne, 100% Chardonnay, coming from the Grand Cru village of Le Menin sur Auger and only from the vineyards inside that village. Only that village. This is a quite a good champagne that you have to keep your eyes on because this champagne is produced in only the best years. So if there is a year that gave still a very good fruit, but they think it's not at the perfection of salon that they are looking for, the fruit is going into Champagne de la Motte. So keep an eye on that. Well, Johan, I'm jealous. Our second Swedish guest in this episode is Christer Bengston. He is the founder and director of Star Wine List a restaurant city guide for wine lovers, which is also the topic of my very first episode. You can go to the channel and take a look at it if you want to learn more about Star Wine List. As Chris Starr himself is such a kind and nice gentleman, he said, if the end is near, we should finish with a great dessert. His apocalypse model is 1990 Chote Clemence from Barzac. Those who studied a lot about Sauterne, they should know about Barzac. Barzac is a village located quite close to Sauterne. They're also producing sweet wines based on Semillon. They are dating back to 16th century and also a part of the Sauterne classification of Napoleon Bonaparte and they are a first grove chateau. 
Which chateau in Sauternes is the only superior first growth? Yes, Chateau de Quai. You know that. Christa, that was a very sweet answer. Thank you. And then comes big boss, Soren Polonius. A good friend and a mentor to me, I was lucky to work under the supervision of him for a week as a sommelier intern in Esperanto in Stockholm. And I learned a lot from him. In one week, it was like one year of school for me. Thank you, Soren. So, when I asked this question to Soren, I was expecting him to hit very hard. I was expecting something like an old vintage of uh, Coche du Rie, for example. But he even hit harder. He just killed it. He said in a zombie apocalypse, he would have a vertical of Latange. I was like, whoa, what years? And he said, seven years from 2010 to 2016. And he said, after that, I will be one of the first smiling zombies finishing that part of the cellar. Thank you, sir. That was a great answer. You killed it. And then now we're going to Norway, the Norwegian gang. So we're starting with Liora Levi. Liora is one of the most sweetest and kindest persons you could ever meet in wine world. Recently, she is the president of Norwegian Sommelier Association. She won the best Nordic competition in 2012 and also in 2013 she was the best of Norway. So her apocalypse bottle is Graham's Vintage Tappet Hand 1977. She also stayed on the sweet side, as Christer did. Tappet Hand is a size of bottle used in pork production and it exactly takes three standard bottles of wine, which is 2.25 liters. Next is Alexander Iversen. I met Alex uh, during the competitions in the past couple of years. He is the head sommelier of Omakase Oslo, which is a Michelin one-star restaurant. His apocalypse bottle is Krug Vintage 1996, a Pinar based blend by the legendary and charismatic house Krug. Francesco Marzola, my friend with Italian roots, who lives in Norway and he is the head sommelier of Park Hotel Wasselwangen, one of the best and biggest sellers in the whole Scandinavia. And it's also an award-winning seller as well. He is the winner of the best Nordic sommelier championship in 2018 and also the winner of the best Norwegian sommelier competition 2020. His apocalypse bottle is also a champagne, also from Krug, it's Krug Claude Menil 1979. Got a special bottle because this is the first single vineyard champagne in the history of Krug and quite much the very first vintage that they made Claude de Menil as a single vineyard champagne. Very good one, man. Very, very good choice. Next is Simon Zimmerman. If there is one crazy wine guy in Norway, I guess that's him. Those who know Simon probably they know what a party boy he is. Right, Simon? I know you like that, man. I know you like this description. Simon is the head sommelier of the restaurant Hapolati in Oslo, and also he is the winner of the best sommelier Norway competition 2015 and 17. He is also the best Nordic sommelier in 2013. His apocalypse bottle is Domaine du Comte Liger Bellari, Bon Romanet Claude du Chateau 2014. Wow. That's a killer top notch Pinot Noir, which is coming from the magnificent village of Bon Romanet. But he was not finished with this, he also said that together with all these, he would have Maximin Grunhaus Alpsberg Grosselage Moselle Riesling Schwatlitz 2016 in Magnum, very good bottle, and a little bit seeded to Dove's Port Vintage 1985. Those who know Simon, you might even guess, in a zombie apocalypse, he would mix all these together probably and just drink it. That's Simon. Thank you, buddy. You're awesome. And Henrik Dahl Janssen. Hello, my dear friend. My charismatic, handsome friend. <music> Henrik is someone I met through the sommelier competitions as well. And he is the head sommelier of the one Michelin star restaurant in Trondheim, Speyersalen in the Britannia Hotel. He is the winner of the Norwegian best sommelier competition in the years 2014, 16, 18, and 19. Four times. I have seen him competing myself. 
he is amazing. And he decided to stay at the sweet end of the world as well. And he would open a port those 1970. And he added, he would also have Champagne Krug Vintage 2002. As you can see, the Norwegian gang love their Krug. But who doesn't like Krug? It's just a little bit pricey for me. I don't know about you, for me, wow, it's a little bit pricey. Well, how about me? What is my apocalypse bottle? Well, I will probably open a bottle of champagne, and that would be a very rare bottle. Nothing too fancy, nothing too expensive, but still quite a rare bottle. I have a bottle of Marino Ledru Grand Cru aging in my cellar, and to be honest, I'm a big fan of her champagnes. Two years ago, I was happy to be served her champagnes straight from her hands during a lunch break in Reims at their tasting. Her champagnes are super rare because the production is super low and people have been talking that she's gonna get retired soon, I don't know when, but still I believe that her champagnes are already rare and will become even more rare in future. That was my Apocalypse bottle. She is a wonderful producer, a lovely lady and the champagnes are so delicious. Stay safe, stay cool, drink moderate, do a lot of exercise, do sports, read and study my friends. If you browse my channel, you will find some useful episodes and enjoy them. Thank you for watching Wine Fiction.